Today on Mechanical Mashup, we take an iPhone, some chloroplast, duct tape, and a CD case to make a teleprompter. And Dave shows us how to oxidize steel wool at a highly aggressive rate for fun and amusement of others. What? What the hell? Who's writing these scripts? Like, are you trying to make me sound smarter? This is retarded. What the hell does it mean? media where the host has a lot to remember and ends up using cue cards to prompt him or her off the side of the camera. An example of this is one of my favorite podcasts, Command N. Now one of the hosts, Jeff, he uses cue cards for a segment. And Jeff, I love your work. I think it's brilliant. I use it in many aspects of my tech life and even in this podcast. But what goes to my head when you glance off the side of the camera to consult your notes is that you appear to be that person who can never look you in the eyes when he's talking to you. So I did some research on the web and looked up why some people may not look at you in the eye when they're talking to you. And it came up with a couple of reasons. One is, is that you might be staring at my boobs. Dude, I'm up here. The other one is, is that you might be lying to me after all this time, like seriously. I trusted you! The other thing is, is that you might have a serious case of ADD. Okay, seriously, you know, the last thing I came up with is that you need a teleprompter and they're expensive. I found an iPhone app, but I couldn't afford the hardware, so I decided to make my own. And this is what you're gonna get. this thing looks like here. Um, it's pretty simple and I'll go through a little bit first but I'm going to show you um, first you have to get the Pro Prompter iPhone app. So there's a couple of things we need to cover. First of all there's a little insert that gets put into this side here and it's nothing more than another piece of chloroplast and it's been cut out so that it holds the phone and you place it in there and then you'll put in some tape just to hold it so it doesn't go anywhere. Next thing is, is that I've made it so that you can remove the CD lens. Uh, you can see my fingerprints and scratches on it. These things get scratched really easily. Bonus is, is that they're very disposable. You could go buy a pack of them for nothing. 
and be able to interchange them. Um, it's so close to the lens that you probably never ever notice any major scratches. And the last thing that I've done here, I'm not sure if you can see very closely, is that right there and right here, what I've done is I've taken some coat hanger and um, I've placed it on the inside just to reinforce the chloroplast. It should be strong enough. I'm positive it would be strong enough, but I just wanted to do that, just that little extra. So, we're gonna get rid of these. Well, looks like I need another lens. <laughs> okay, so what I'm gonna do here is show you the last little bit that wasn't shown in the build. So first thing is it showed you how to build this base box. Then what you're gonna have to do is that you're gonna have to place your camera without any lens hood on it, um, right up against this box here, and just draw a trace and outline. Once you've traced the outline, you can cut it out. The next thing that I did is that I turned it sideways, and I lifted it up, and I approximated where the quarter inch 20, this, this guy right here, this hole is. So that what I ended up doing was is I just took the X-Acto knife, and I cut just a little X or a hole in here. In this case, I used a drill, but you should be able to just take an exact knife and you should be able to cut an X. So you go X like that, and that should work. And then after that, you have everything set up. You should be good to go. The last thing is that you have the little puck that usually comes on top of your tripod. Normally, the, the screws that are in it are fairly short, and they also have like a little snap ring in there. So just get a pair of pliers, grab the snap ring, yank it open, drop that screw out and then go get a quarter inch 20 bolt that is long enough. This one's just slightly longer than the other one that originally came out of there. But essentially, it's enough to make it through the coroplast and up into the camera. And we're good to go. And now a segment from my buddy Dave and he's gonna cover burning questions with Dave. Hi, I'm Dave Spencer from Mechanical Mashup. Today I'm doing a segment called Burning Questions, where for you, I'm going to risk life, limb, or at least a disapproving look for my wife, all to answer a question you've probably never asked. Let's go. So welcome to my secret laboratory here. What we're going to do is we're going to make some fireworks out of some steel wool, some sort of wire, and a piece of string. I'll show you how to do it. What we're going to do here is just, I've got some aluminum wire here for TIG welding. I'm going to cut off a little piece of it. I'm going to make a small loop that I can tie the string to. And I'm going to shape it into a hook. I'm going to take my steel wool. The really neat thing about steel wool is it's very, very fine metal. And if you touch fire to it or even just run electrical current to it, like through this 9 volt battery, it will. So I'm going to take my hook, I'm going to spread the steel wool out a little bit, slide it onto the hook just like uh, you're going fishing with a worm. It takes a little bit. But... So now I've got my steel wool. Pull it apart a little bit more. There we go. I'm going to get some string and then I'll show you exactly what we're going to do with it. So I've tied on about one meter of string or so, and so all you need, just something for a good swing with your arms. We're going to use centrifugal force here to uh, make our firework uh, look really spectacular. This is this is one of those things where I can say you can try this at home. It's very unlikely you're going to cause a fire. Uh, don't do it near a can of gasoline. Don't do it near dry leaves. Um, Right now, you might be able to hear it's raining out right now, so uh, I mean, this is about the safest time you could possibly do. I would highly suggest you uh, goggle up for it, because uh, you never can be too safe. It does throw some hot sparks, kind of like if you're using an oxyacetylene torch. If it lands on you, it's not going to kill you, it'll give you a little tiny burn. Nothing too bad. Uh, happened lots at work, so I'm not too concerned about it. Alright, let's go out and uh, I'll show you what it does. have it, the first episode of Mechanical Mashup. Now, hopefully we can get these out week by week, but we don't have a sponsor yet, so we'll do our best, but we can't guarantee anything. 
We have some pretty cool projects on the go. We got a Coroplast canoe, a fully functional sprung steady cam system, not one of these pipes that you have to hold, tire your arms out. Much, much more. Dave might even try to blow something up. Anyway, Jeff, your prompter's in the mail. You should be getting it Monday or Tuesday. And finally, if you have any comments or suggestions, don't hesitate to come to mechanicalmashup.tv and leave them in the comments underneath this post or in the forum. And remember that no CAD files were harmed in the making of this episode. We'll catch on fire.